Hello, my name is Samuel Atamensa. It's good to be with you again and welcome to another edition of Footprints. You know, we are on to um, track the footprints of another great man of the land. And um, before we get into having our chat with him, I'd like you to just watch this piece and then when we come back, zoom in to the man himself. Stay tuned. General Joseph Nunu Mensa was born in Winneba in the 1930s to parents who were fisher folks. As a child, he also went into fishing, helping his parents and only had the opportunity to enter school for the first time at the age of 13. He was enlisted into the Ghana Army in October 1960 and started training at the Ghana Military Academy. Midway through the training, he was selected to continue his training at the prestigious Royal Military Academy, Sunhurst, England, where he graduated in 1963 as the best overseas officer cadet. On his return after the two-year training, he served in various positions in the military, rising to become the chief of defense staff on two separate occasions. General Joseph Nunumensa will tell the rest of his story on Footprints Now. Welcome back. Now you know who we are talking about. It's um, Brigadier General Nunumensa. General Nuno Mensa. You know, I get confused with the military rank. So, um, anyway, welcome to the program, sir. Samuel, thank you. Thank you very I much. I salute, sir. <laughs> I take your salute. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we are in awe when we see yes. the, the, you know, the whole structure of the military yes. and the discipline yes. and how people who spend their lives in the military yes. even after they are out of the military yes. there's one thing that they keep and yes. that's the discipline that's right and you you are you epitomize it in, in all aspects thank you Samuel but it's good to be here you are most welcome all of you most welcome thank you sir so um, is it brigadier general or general or what in my time it was brigadier oh it was added. It was, it's been Brigadier General. Americans are Brigadier General. Okay. We have, we have got British tradition in Ghana yeah. here. Mm -hmm. It's Brigadier. In the same rank, Brigadier General. Okay. So I retired as Brigadier, but now it's referred as Brigadier General. General. The okay. same thing. Okay. In my time, there were maybe not more than three or four mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole armed forces. Okay. Today we have a lot of us. But the most important thing is not the rankers per se. But the position you held, mm -hmm. that was me what was most important. Mm -hmm. When you became chief of defense, which I did mm -hmm. 40 years ago, I don't know many people in Ghana were not born at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, they wonder whether, uh, people ask whether I used to alive. I thought you, you appeared on the political scene long ago. You are around. I said, I'm around. I'm not going yet. <laughs> it's interesting how people remember you for politics rather than military. But, but yeah. some of us remember you more for military than even politics. I didn't do much politics. Yes, um, yes. Very little politics. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't like it. I mean, you've just been vocal, you know. I've been uh, vocal. That yeah. is, it's not politics. It's about being pit a patriot. Very much so. You know, vocal because I want Ghana to go a certain way. Right and it's not going yeah. the way I thought it would go. Correct. But I'm not political. I'm not political mm -hmm. at all. I'm a patriot who want Ghana very much uh, you know, to, so to well. so so it's brigadier nuno mensa that's right okay um retired retired but normally we it's, it's a yeah, mouthful brigadier, when we yes, add yeah, a that, retired that, that, that is true but even these days sergeants are, are, are yeah, when they retire they say sergeant retired so that's right. that's i don't right. know whether it's permitted in the army but uh, uh, well, well um retired because i'm not on active service yeah even though if Ghana were to go to war right now i think i'm fit enough to go back to yeah, to, um, you know, I, I remember I retired 1979. You, I know you come back to that. Yeah. And then June 4th, it was June 4th, and I retired by the Le Mans administration. Twelve years later, there was 31st December uh, coup, which was through the Le Mans administration. I was in my farm at a Hacho, <laughs> my cadaver farm. I, and I had my name, Hacho. Hacho, yeah, but yeah, back in the day, uh, yes, farmlands yes, all yes, over yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Farming, seriously, you came here and there was food everywhere, not yeah. like today. 
I had my name on radio that I was being wanted in Burma camp. Oh, but I'm a farmer. I mean, what, what, what <laughs> Burma camp? You thought you were done with it. So I had to come back, look for the uniform, clean them up, and put them on, go back to barracks. So quickly, you became a military man again? Oh, yes. I mean, you can. I mean, I was, I retired. The way you were retired wasn't the best of, of, of it. Oh, so you were retired by the government? By the government. Well. At the age of 42. So I've been retired for the past 40, were, 40 but, years. But you were, you were a brigadier at the time? It was political, unfortunately. Look, what I'm saying is that you were a brigadier at the time. I was a brigadier. I was a brigadier in 1976. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> wow. It's a long time ago. There were then a few brigadiers, not more than Let me ask, do you, yeah. do you teach at the, uh, any of the academies, the military academies? You know, unfortunately, I don't. Um, I don't. And it's rather unfortunate that our institutions in the military, not even beyond the military, should be using people like me with our vast... And they don't? They don't. I mean, again, Ghana, Ghana has a problem. They're saying well, that... No, sorry, problems. Well, I had problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Many problems. One of yeah. them is this, that when you are supposed to be used, when your, your brain is so mature, so... Yeah. I remember when I went to Britain in 1961 for the first time. I never dreamed in my life that fishing, catching fishes and crabs in Winneba, you end up going to Sandhurst. Sandhurst? Yes. A top wow. business school in the world. I mean, of course, a fantastic of course, experience. of course. Uh, you, you should have been an excellent student for you to gain uh, well, uh, an admission into Sandhurst. There's yeah, this thing here, if you see, say the best overseas officer cadets. You go to Sandhurst, you didn't go to Archimorton and Fancy Tomorrow. You, know, you went to some... Rabbi school. Oh, school. no, 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 I disagree. <laughs> Winnisec is no rabbi well, school. In those days, now, now it's, a good, it's a very good school, but yeah. in those days, yeah. in, mm. if you know Winneba quite well, we yeah, were at the no, South no, Campus. No, I went to Swedish with Secondary School. Yeah, so Winneba, Winneba is not far, 15 yeah. miles away. And we had to go, so I to go and work, help the fishermen That's to get fish to come and cook, to eat at Secondary School. You were that students. bad. As students. students. And my mother used to bring food to the, to the, to the um, dormitory. Mm -hmm. My niece used to carry the food. By 7 o'clock, I'll call my, ne my friends right. to eat fufu and abengu and all those, those, those times. Without that, there was no proper meal to have. Okay. That was conditions that we lived in. It was very harsh. Mm -hmm. I was going to my papers the other day and I saw a letter. My mom wrote to uh, Ghana Education Trust that she couldn't pay my school fees. It was 25 pounds and she couldn't pay. She was too poor to pay. And I, I, I look at it and I, I, I smiled. Wow. And today your son is this much up yeah, there. Yeah, Honor yeah. goes to the Lord, I mean, who made all yeah. this possible. But also, you have to fight for yourself. For yourself. Mm. You know, we have to struggle. The struggle I've gone through, mm. people don't, can't imagine it. We cannot. You've gone through such hell, but that hell prepared you to be so tough. So you were, you were born in Winneba, I'm, I'm sure. Born in Winneba. Uh, a lot of fishermen. I mean, I grew up, I never ever dreamed I would, be, I would go to school because the house was full of fishermen. If you don't Winneba, I had at the beach. Yeah, they see just about 15 meters away. The next door, yeah. They're always in the beach catching crabs and fishing. So yeah. school was far away. Mm. But the school also behind my, my Methodist school, where I ended up eventually, was behind my father's house. So our life was all about fishing. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what about fishing? At this time, fish everywhere. Going to school was very rare, something which never, never occurred it to me. part of it, yeah. And I know until about sometime 1945, 3045. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, so I got the idea to go to school. There were, there were fishermen everywhere, fishing net everywhere. My father wasn't around, and, and he traveled. When he came, I said, I was going to go to school. He said, go to school? It was very strange to him. And I remember very well, I was insisting and giving him hell, at, you know, and giving him hell, really hell. And we never had four schools at the time. Methodist, Anglican, EC, ECM, English Church Mission School. Then Methodist, Roman Catholic, and AME Zion School. That's all. And my father was forced to go to the schools. In fact, the nearest one was Methodist, just, just a few meters from my house. But it was so full. The poor man didn't know what to do. I was actually crying. I remember very well. I don't forget things. Crying and giving me hell. But as, you know, I, I, what I've learned, some is this, this world. I've seen a few things in my life that we have been ordained by God to come and do something. You're not here for nothing for a purpose. At that very moment, there was a rumor that the Presbyterian uh, missionary, missionary from Basel in Switzerland were going to set up a school, not far from my house, but just about the, the school here. At that very moment, when I was crying for school, mm. 
So this school was open at a place called Millers. Millers is a big cocoa yard. Millers is actually, it's actually a, cocoa, a company that bought cocoa in those days. And they're giving up that the shed. Yard, yeah. The shed for cocoa, we had to go in there without windows. That's how we started. Eight boys, two girls. Of the eight boys, only one is alive today, Dr. Don Arthur. Everybody you know Don Arthur. Oh, of course, the architect. Architect, he was my classmate. Yeah. Oh, wow. The rest are all no more. The two girls are no more. Michael and Sifi, Mary Bonnie. Then the boys, and I buried one not long ago. We're almost all finished now. But the school then progressed from Kokoshet to Kokoshet, but I think Kokoshet in Winneba. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I ended up in Agunan Sabah Presbyterian School. But I was so determined to succeed. I don't know why. I mean, I was determined. Just imagine you had nobody to teach you arithmetic when you had to, a homework to do. I had to go and figure out the answer. Because the official men, they asked the official men how to teach, teach you a, yeah. a, you know, a, a equation. No, I had no idea. But that so taught you Samba, to be. Yes. So you moved from Winneba, across all the place, uh, Kram Krob, all those places, so yeah. to Nsaba. Why Nsaba? Because when you go to Form 3 or mm -hmm. Class 6, or new form form one. Standard three, standard three, In those days, yeah. standard, one standard six. Yeah. Then you go to middle school form yeah. one. Fifty one. There was no second thing in Winneba. The, the school was up to. I had to go six. somewhere. Yeah. So there was there was exam across the country. Petroleum schools, Winneba and Saba. I think Ponyako had one, mm -hmm. and then Kropong. All the schools had exam. And those who did very well ended up in the boarding school in Agunan Sabah. For the first time in my life, I actually left home. And my mother dropped me. I mean, you had to go. I mean, I just took my book, took Trotro, I mean, then, you know, went all the way. The room was, was, was untied, so much dust. But life was, was, was horrible. But that was life. I remember my school fees in those days was six months a day. Not school fees, food. Food, yeah. Food was. Two pesos, I mean, uh, two, two uh, tapens. If you do tapens, they wouldn't know. You have uh, this penny with a hole inside. Mm -hmm. Two of them was for meal, for lunch, for breakfast, lunch, and two for breakfast, two for lunch, two for dinner. So, you know, you paid about 5p a whole day. And the food was so, I mean, it's uh, the fufu, and uh, you know, it was amazing. Food cost nothing. Amazing food. Amazing food. Cool. Fantastic food. I mean, there was no, there was no, no dormitory. No cookhouse in the school. We had caterers in the town. Okay. So a woman would be a caterer. She would cook the normal food for the family, and then my portion would be put into a bowl and brought to the school for me to eat. Such an experience, wonderful experience mm. at Nsaban. But I didn't stay for too long because the life was really, really harsh. I had to wake up in the morning. We never, we never had everything. We never had uh, uh, we never water. The town, man. Had power. Had everything. Yeah. Was yeah. a port. Shops yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Then I had to go to this uh, horrible place, wake oh. up 4 o'clock, and walk <laughs> barefoot in the jungle to go and carry a bucket of water in the Accra River. And you walk two miles in, two miles out. Yeah. Four miles every day, just to carry a bucket of water. Today, you say, we've got water in the tap, just open the tap, there's water. In those days, we never had water, of course, any water. But on Saban, they didn't have it. Mm. And all the way to the river, between Yerkrum and, and, uh, and Saban, Saba. River yeah. Accra. You know, so mm. that's the life we had, a very rough life. But that mm. taught me a lot of things. I left the school after a few months because I just couldn't bear the, you know, it was just too tough. Even mm. I, such a rough person, couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so I left, I left the school and then came to... You came back to... Came back to Winneba, Methodist School. That's where my real life began. So at this point, they had also started the... Uh, middle school. No, Methodist was was as our old school. Oh, okay. Methodist had trained so many people. One of the old older schools. Oh, okay. Methodists have been trained so many, so many, so many quality people. Mm. You know, mm. so they they were a service school. Right. But I ended up at uh, at uh, at uh, Presby because Presby I course. didn't have a space access. In, at the time, but I came back to Methodist and joined people like we buried a doctor, Doctor Kito, last weekend. Mm -hmm. Called Kito, a wonderful doctor. Oh, okay. That's mate of mine. Wow. Uh, he came from fancy people. Mm -hmm. The good ones went to Fazip and Achimota. We, the poor ones, went to the terrible schools. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, so, that was the life. But so it was exciting. I mean, life was so labor. And from Methodist school, you, you Methodist went school, to then the good ones. We had a common entrance, 1952. Dr. Kitu, I'm talking about, mm -hmm. he passed, went to Fazip in 53. And the others went to Achimota, others went all over the place. But mainly in Fazip, it was a Methodist school. 
I stayed on until I completed my school in 1954. Standard 7 or Form 4. Okay. Had what you call board two certificate, where you were, you were actually graded mm -hmm. and given... The middle school living certificate. Exactly. Yeah. There was no examination as such. Oh, okay. You were graded by your teachers, mm -hmm. and then, you know, how well you did. Then, what do I do? I couldn't go to secondary school. My parents were too poor to go to secondary school. I had to go actually find some work to do to save the money that I earned. Mm -hmm. Let's save every peso that I earned, every penny. We had pounds in those days, Ghana pounds, Gold Coast pounds. You see my British pound. You know, I had six pounds a month in those days. So it to be 12 cities, 12 old cities. That's how much I had. But every money was saved. I saved every peso. But one, food was plentiful. There was fish everywhere. I mean, we never had so much food. So much fish. The fish was yesterday. They don't think about tomorrow what you eat. Just they see, they just go and put a hook there and hook some fish and go and cook it. Yeah, I mean, that's it. And that was it. That was beautiful life. Mm -hmm. Beautiful life. You know, food was everywhere, not like today. So we didn't think of, yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow was not a problem. There was a lagoon not far from Winneba, teeming with fish, sh mm -hmm. shrimps. I mean, I want to remember these things. My, my, my mouth waters with me. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. <laughs> Today, to go and buy food, you have to take a, a car, go to market. Yeah, no, yeah. It was terrible. So after that, you went to secondary school also in It Winneba? was 1957. I thought I had had enough. I was actually beginning to shave, 20 years old. I went to school 20 years old when I went to secondary school. By then, my friends, some had completed secondary education. At the fancy marriage school. Hang on. You went to secondary school when you were 20. Yes. And you went to Form 1. I went to Form 2. But whilst I was working, working, I was studying so hard that I done equations, simultaneous equations, wow. quadratic equations, Latin, literature. I was actually learning so hard, you know, um, not so much science, but, but um, algebra, mm -hmm. geometry. Mm -hmm. I knew Pythagoras theorem. I learned them. So when I went to secondary school, I mean, I was, I was ahead of the class. I'd gone through, the, I'd gone through the slab and, and, and finished with them. Wow. But, but you, you were taken to Form 2, straight Form 2, not Form 1. Many of us went to Form 2 at the time. But you were, 20 you years, you are not mistaken for a teacher? When you go, they didn't stand up the whole class, do class 10. Okay, that was the norm. In those days, that was the norm. I mean, even going to primary 1, you yeah. were, you were all grown up. I mean, you were, I was yeah. about 8 years. Precise age, I wouldn't know. Because my father okay. wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't know. But you were all grown up. But a few ones were below age. Hmm. You know, nobody knew the age. In those days, we were, people, people gave birth outside the hospital. <clears throat> so, and all these were <clears throat> illiterate. Nobody knew when you were born. They could remember that, my father could remember that, oh, when we had the earthquake, I had to figure out why, when was the earthquake? 1939. You were about 20 years, about two years old in a few months. So I said, 39? Okay, take two years, 37. June. June, we had this earthquake, 1939. Mm -hmm. So two years out, 37. Yeah. Two years old, early 37. So you have a good idea yeah. about when you were born. The exact dates you wouldn't know. No. Few of us knew our, our dates of birth. Yeah. So I went to secondary school, 57. Then I became independent at the time I was in school. The school that you see today is a very good school now. But That's then, really about secondary yes, school, yeah. then it was very difficult. Mm. We didn't have teachers. Good. Teachers so came in there. The and, whole five years? Yeah, five years in Winnipeg secondary school. At, at, at before my time, Exams were held in December. In that year, 1960, Wyatt took over the examination from Cambridge. But the standards were the same. And they brought it forward to June. So June exam started in 1960. Mm -hmm. So I actually did three and a half years. Okay. Instead of five years. Uh, yeah. I lost one and a half years. But that didn't matter to me. You know, and the conditions were so, were so harsh. I mean, I remember coming to do the exam in Accra. We didn't have an exam center in Winneba. Wow. So I came to live with a cousin at uh, around the, uh, down the I saw a cane runabout, somewhere around the area there, near the, the, the mosque. And the exams were held at Makola. There's a big hall there, I remember, a very huge hall in the middle of Makola. And just imagine the noise. <laughs> and it's amazing that they put us there to, to do examination. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't hear your next door. There was. You know, tolling of bells and don't come in, don't come in, don't come in. And so much noise. <laughs> and you were supposed to think and do mathematics. Yes. I just couldn't imagine how we survived. Mm -hmm. But we managed. Yeah. And I was the first in that school to come out with grade one. 
you had grade one. Yes. Under all those harsh conditions. Wow. Everybody don't believe that it was possible. Mm -hmm. But everything's possible if you apply yourself. But that was a huge. It was huge. I mean, to get grade one was very huge. In the, very, very huge in those days. Mm. You, had, you had to pass A subjects yeah. with very good grades. A's and B's and A's and so on. You know. Mm -hmm. And it amazed it didn't amaze me because I knew that I was working extremely hard. I was doing Latin. You didn't have teachers. You had to actually go to bookshops, come to Achimata bookshop, buy the syllabus, buy the book, and study on your own. Once in a while, you had a teacher to help you. But other than that, there was no teacher. So Winneba actually began to change from Ghana Secondary School to Winneba Secondary School in my time. Oh, good. And the reason was very simple. In 1959, I was about to finish the school. When conditions were so harsh that we, could, we, we were frightened about the exam, no teachers, poor nutrition, nothing. It was so hard. So there were three boys. I was one of them. One Mr. Fosu and one Mr. Obuba. We got up and said, look, let's write to the Prime Minister at the time. Then Ghana was not a republic. And complain about the school and ask him to come and help us because we couldn't take any more. So we wrote a letter which was anonymous and then posted it at the post of one night. One of us typed the letter. Not me, then. <laughs> well, he went to commercial so, school. So yourself, Nuno Mensa, Fusu, Fusu, and Obuba. Obuba. We did letter anonymously to the Prime Minister of Flagstaff House, today, Jubilee House. But Flagstaff at that time. Accra. We thought we were just joking. But amazingly, within a matter of two or three weeks, there was a rumor in the school that some student had written a letter to the Prime Minister complaining about the school. Are you didn't own up? No, of course. I mean, who the hell are you to go and own up? <laughs> <laughs> we kept quiet, but we had done nothing yeah. criminal. We get concerned about our future. And Dr. Nkuma did something which amazed all of us. I mean, with, you know, which still amazes me. I write to presidents after him, and I don't get any response that the letter had been received. Ghana was smaller then, so. But smaller, but, but you know, but <laughs> they, were, they were civil servants who knew what they were about. When the letter came, I didn't think President Nkuma, then Prime Minister Nkuma saw it. To be opened by his private secretary or something, other prime minister. And he saw that it was important. So, Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, for your attention, then what will happen? What will happen with me? Mm -hmm. I think what the defense wrote to me, my ADC, not ADC, my AMA, will open the letter and not, notify me, sir, with the, with the extra marks, sir, you need to, to see this one. Those which are irrelevant, you put them aside. So, I know that Nkuma saw this letter, which was pushed to him, and he meditated on it. And within two, three weeks, one of Mrs. Gibson, a white lady, came to the school, a little smallish woman, but very like, like, like uh, a fierce dog, small dog, but, you know, really a, a tigress. <laughs> and she took the school apart, had to go and return the school upside down and clean it up. As a woman, go and sort it out. Mm -hmm. This woman came to the school and things began to change. She was a good mathematics teacher. I was in her class. I remember very well, when, when she began to turn the school upside down, many of the teachers rebelled against her, mm. even threatening her life. Wow. And I was, <laughs> I was very tough in those days, and I had to spend some time in her house, sleeping in the li living room like here. Mm. Yes. You know, and something happened. I always have faith in God, and this faith begins to grow and grow. I had paid my, I saved money to pay my school fees two years on. The money had run out. So I was, I was actually wondering what to do thereafter. Holidays, and I was in the house, sleeping there, going home the next morning. Then one morning, the lady called me early in the morning and said, you know, man, she says, ma'am, she said, who pays your school fees? Out of the blue. I said, my mother. She said, your mother? <laughs> what does she do? I said, she sells foodstuffs at the market. She knows the market, she's a teacher there, not far from the school. That's what she does, and she pays her fees. She didn't believe me. Of course, she didn't believe me, she was right. But I didn't tell her that, you know, I was paying it. Yes. And she said, where's your mother? She said, at home. She said, tomorrow, Monday morning, well, Saturday morning, bring your mother to my house. I'm quoting her. I will take you to, to a Ghana Education Trust and get you a scholarship. I'm quoting it, unquote. I went and told my mother, 
army, my elite, mobile elite, mobile elite, <laughs> the food language. <laughs> By age, we were there. I sat in the, in the passenger side of the car. She was driving. I remember very well. You know, the concern she had for us, as if I knew her, as if she knew me somewhere. There's something which is missing in Ghana today. Yes. So, spending time and uh, in, in Winneba Secondary School and um, coming up with, with grade one, yes. uh, which, which even in our time, it was a big deal. Yes. Um, did you do sit form or at the time? If you, you couldn't could pay your school fees, <laughs> you are going to think about sit form. How are you going to pay your school fees? <laughs> I mean, okay. how are you going to pay? You couldn't right. pay. You, mm -hmm. God saw you through secondary school education. Yes, yes. How can you think of think of this form? So it wasn't an option at the time. It was an option, but then something happened. Just before we left school, we never secondary school. You know where they are at the moment. Yeah. We moved from the South Campus today, South Campus of the University of Education, we mm -hmm. to a new site, Central Campus, mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle of the town. Yeah. yeah. And. I know where we say is now. Is that where you are talking about? No. Where okay. that, you know, we, I didn't go to school there. I, yeah, I didn't yeah. get there. We ended up right in the town. Mm -hmm. There's a big market in Winneba. Mm -hmm. no, there, were two, there were two markets. One at the beach, one in the middle of the town, a big one. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a campus there for the university called Central Campus. School mm -hmm. of Music. I don't know where they were. They no, were no, no. Winneba School of Music. That's yeah. right. That's where I left school. Mm -hmm. And... At that time, before we did our exam, there was a group from the Ghana Military Academy. One chap by name W. W. Stalibras, Englishman, with a team of officers, mainly white, going to school to, from school to school, convincing young people that there was a career in the military. So asking us to apply to go into the military. That was an option I couldn't. I couldn't refuse. refuse. I had a lot of military background, military people in my family. A lot of people. I mean, my father had two cousins who fought in Burma. Major Aqua, who was killed with the judges, 82. Samakwa. Samakwa. Samakwa, we grew up in the same house. Wow. Yeah, the same house in Winneba. So, my father relation. So, I had a lot of historical antecedents, antecedents in my family. So, going to the army was an option. It wasn't, wasn't there something that I had to think, think twice, about. Think twice, yeah. No. I just went there. And imagine, and we did, did our exam in June. The result hadn't actually arrived yet. But I mean, we were called to Burma camp for examination and test. One week of test. Came to Burma Hall in Burma camp. And went through mathematics exam and English. But you see, I just came to school. Mathem I had one in mathematics. So it, I, it was a just beautiful time to come and just, just brush through it, you know, in English. Yeah. And I went through that. They had one week of practical examination at Tishi. Okay. That was very tough. Mm -hmm. That's when you show that you are not only mentally sound, mm -hmm. but physically able and capable. You know, okay. I remember very well that. So at this yeah. point, you are now being introduced into the military. That's right. Okay. So you are watching Footprint, and I've been speaking with um, Brigadier Nuno Mensah, and he's just taking us through his footprints. You know, some of the footprints are so weighty and of good substance, good value, that we can't just let them go like that. So we still have a lot to learn. But now he has entered the military training process. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll, he will share his experiences, how he became a soldier. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll be back. Welcome back. I'm having a good time. The program is a footprint, and I'm here with Brigadier Nunu Mensa or General Nunu Mensa. I feel I feel a lot of punch in the general yeah. more than the brigadier. The brigadier is you know yeah. is General Nunu Mensa, so he's here with us. So, General, you have now been um, can I say recruited into the army? Almost about okay. recruited. Mm -hmm. But let me clear one small point. Why are you not comfortable with brigadier? You see. I have been controversial all my life, mm -hmm. and I make people uncomfortable. <laughs> and it doesn't bother me to make you uncomfortable. I yeah. live by the truth. Mm -hmm. I was chief of defense staff on two occasions. The rank then was major general, but it became lieutenant general. So I should have been promoted, put them by the Lima administration. I'm not somebody who will, <laughs> who will 
you know, compromise my principles because of rank, you know. I would speak my mind. I remember I was a captain in the army, 1964, and I was taken to President Kroma's office to explain something I had done. Just imagine going to Kroma's office. A young, a young boy. You, you, I mean, who are you? I mean, you, you couldn't look at a man's face. And you are going to explain yourself. But it's, this is the kind of person I am. I've been taught to speak the truth, not to lie. And I've got many, many brushes with the, with the command. I mean, I, if I, I can go through many of them. Kina Kotoka, I don't know what the who will be through Nkuma. But not many people have the courage to speak. Yeah. But unfortunately, Ghana here, when you speak your mind, people get offended for speaking the truth. Mr. Trump fires uh, John Bolton. I already saw the TV news yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Because they disagree on issues of principle. A man's advisor, mm -hmm. he tells you something. He doesn't, he doesn't tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. So you fire him. I was fired by Lehman mm -hmm. as chief of defense staff. But I will never cut out my minister of defense, Mr. Ralipoku. Never ever. So they fire you. But it didn't bother me. I had a big farm. I went to my farm. We need Ghanaians to be strong, strong minded, bold, to speak up mm -hmm. and speak what they believe to be right. You may be wrong, but that's what you believe is the right. Speak up. Ghana will be better off. So the rank doesn't bother me. I should have been left a general. But it didn't bother me because I will come in. I was also, I resigned from President. President uh, um, Rollins Rollins, government. Yeah. No, later on, Prof. had a big problem. I don't have a problem. We'll, we'll get there. You'll get there. We'll but get there. I'm just letting you understand why I wasn't left wing, you know, left wing, whatever it is. Okay, so you know. would have been um, Brigadier General. Major General. Major General. Left wing general. general. That's right. Before That's field right. But this was all political, but it didn't yeah. bother me anyway at all. It's better that I leave a, I leave a footmark which will be proud to defend. My children and grandchildren will be proud to defend. My grandfather was this man. But were some people promoted um, unduly that you, you, in your own estimation? Yes, I mean, a lot of promotions were ch cheap promotions. At the time? At the time. You remember some of them? I don't want to mention it. But, but you remember <laughs> oh, some of them? Oh, I know plenty them. of them. Oh, well, if there are plenty, then we can guess. <laughs> we are younger, so we are free to guess. You go and guess. <laughs> but I wouldn't mention them here. Unless they are here themselves, they can defend themselves, then I'll okay. mention them. Okay. But I wouldn't do that. Mm. But... You don't let the chip in the position. But how about Kutua Champo? In his case, he I was young, but I remember he, he promoted himself. Yes, Kutua Champo was a colonel. Yes, when, when he, he became... Busier, 1972. 72, yeah. 13th January. Mm. My brain, I don't forget anything. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... The military is a wonderful career. And I recommend that many of our people, those who are doing national service, should spend some time in the military. Why? Well, it should be a requirement. It should be a requirement. It should, it should be a requirement. Be a requirement. It that you be go through that before it becomes even if it's for one month, yes, even if it's for yes. one month. I did, I did three months. Three months. Three months. Three months. Well, prefer then, six months preferably. You go through that. No, six months. Yeah, we have become soldiers. Yeah, but if he, the, 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 the Ghana is in a mess today because of indiscipline. I agree this, with this you. This is the mess. You will not be indisciplined, never ever. If you, you, you give us one month, well, no. six months. Yeah, it's no, some way. I'd, I'd make it three months. Three. Put yeah. them through walking from Adodua to Accra, to the bush <laughs> and so on. And shake, shake them up a little bit. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. who are some of the so, people so, you met when you were finally um, yeah, uh, recruited? Yeah. Today, all my mates are out. Nobody is serving now. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Many of, of course, them, of they are no more. Oh. They are deceased. A lot of them. And that also what... There's a picture here, somewhere around here. 1960, when it was taken. With the Minister of Defense, uh, the graph, the graph, the graph. Johnson... There was General Alexander, many, 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 many uh, officers, and a lot of them are no more. Mm -hmm. That was saddens me. Selected among, there's a picture here, must be somewhere around here, by six of us. Mm -hmm. Intake one, intake two. Okay, two of you were two intakes at the same time. Yes, no, I didn't know that. Intake one was in March mm -hmm. 1960. Intake one, there were people like General Sam. General Sam. You yeah. know him. Yeah, he's, he's still around. He's, he's, still he's around. living around here. Yeah. Some would take one. Yeah, he, he used to be in this. No, uh, just not far from me. Just yeah. across the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, some and uh, who else? Quite a few. He is, he is able. Many of them, they are either you know, disabled, not able to have, have physical problems. Mm -hmm. So he was in take one in 1960, March 1960. And then I was in take two, October 1960. Mm -hmm. My maid, General Queenie, was my maid. Mm 
Ano oh, kwenu. Oh, okay. Jane kwenu, whom you know. Uh, who else? Uh, Mike Hardy. There are quite a few of them. But I can count on my ten, ten Mike figure. Hardy. Mike, you know Mike Hardy? I know no, the, no. the son. Yeah. Who's Mike, also in the military, I think. Yeah, possibly. Mike yeah. Hardy, um, was. Many of them you will not know. Mm. But I've been... How about Afari? Who? Afari. Afari is in take one. He, okay. he, he also used to live in this area, so that's... Me Jena, uh, no, not Jena Jena Ferry. Jena Ferry, I mean. Jena Ferry is, 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 is an old, I mean, a fox. I mean, <laughs> he died not some, some time ago. But he is much, much more of a senior. Oh, no, okay. No, 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 no way near Jena Ferry. Oh, okay. If I, when, I was, when I was in the, in, the, uh, in the school, he was Lieutenant Colonel. And the letter that he signed, I still have some of them in my... In my wow. when I, writing to me to come for interview and so on. He and General Okran were those that I remember very well when he was in school. He died no longer ago. But General, actually, General Okran came from your area, is that right? He came from, he comes from uh, Odobin, Brakwa. Brakwa, okay. Brakwa. So, Esikuma area. Esikuma area, Brakwa, Esikuma. Going to Achimisu. That's right, that's area. right. Okay. That's where he comes from. Oh, he died no longer ago. So, he ago. died uh, months ago. Yeah, yes, General not long ago. So, we are losing all this. But my actual course miss, my actual group, mm -hmm. Not very many are. Those who are alive, they are not public. Uh, yeah. They are too quiet. And I think that they should be able to come up. And you see, we are, this, I like this program, Living Your Footprints. Yeah. You can't just live in this world and just pass through. Yes, pass through. And nobody My mother used to tell me, Nyimpa Omeyeshi Obejizi. Obejizi. A good name. A good name. Hmm. You know, tomorrow, if you go to Winneba, you see Genanunu Mensa House. Yeah. I will go, but the house will be there. But you have streets named after you too. I'm not aware. I'm not aware about that. I know a lot of school. I've been a lot of schools. Maybe six, seven school blocks. Mm. Yes. Well, so we'll come to that one. So yes. it's still here on Footprints. We are talking to General Nunu Mensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll go through the military academy quickly, and then uh, we'll see <laughs> life after passing out of the academy. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, this is Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa and this is City TV. And um, today we've been having a wonderful chat with General Nunu Mensa. General Nunu Mensa. And um, you know, when I, when, I, when, I, when I was a kid, I used to confuse Nunu Mensa with Mensa Wood. Yes. <laughs> you know, because we were all in the army around That's the right, same at the time. time. That's yeah, right. and you were all uh, connected to the PNDC somehow. Uh, 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 in a way, in okay. a way. Okay, connected. Yes. Connected, yeah. that's right, mm. that's right, that's right. That's yeah, right. so anyway, so this is General Nunu Mensa, and it, it's, been, it's been an eye-opener talking to him and his experiences and the struggles and, 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 and you know, he, in all these things, so far what I have picked up is that he never gave up hope. He had no background, any financial backing, Nobody to refer to, but he never gave up. So if you're listening to us, please, don't go anywhere. So now you are in the academy. In the army, in the mm -hmm. academy, 1960, October 1st, 1960. Mm -hmm. Met about 50, odd 50 or other students from France from and different from places. schools. But then the teachers were mostly British. Captain okay. Minister, Captain Watts, and Major Stones, and... I can remember their names. You remember the names? Yes, yes fantastic. Well, it was part of the drill. That's right. You have to be, have a sharp brain. Yeah. But the sharp brain didn't come from drinking appetition, drinking <laughs> terrible things. If you remember, if the brain is a living organ. Mm. If you abuse the brain by drinking all kinds of stupid things, you destroy the brain. Mm. I want to tell young people today that yeah. the brain, you can't just abuse the brain by drinking every cocktail of drink, some green, blue, energy drink, energy drink, what energy? Destroying the brain. But I never <laughs> drank. I did anything foolishly. So the army, you went to the army, the first year, had a very tough life, very rough life. Hmm. It was very rough, extremely rough. But you are used to some, yes, uh, some uh, small uh, rough yeah, life but, but, but it, 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 Actually, I, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Then a year later, you know, in September 1961, made a selection to choose four best lot to go to Britain. Hmm. And lo and behold, I was one of them. Myself, late Kenneth Feli, SMA Kwenzibi and Kwame Mifetu. Mifetu and me alive. I Kwenzibi and, and, and Kifele are no more. We went to Britain in 61. It was first, I never dreamed in my life that the fisherman's son would end up going to the army and going to Britain. I never had the slightest dream. So tell me about it. So you were there and then 
you had been told that some people no no you had spent a year there yeah and they have been exam they've been watching you i mean this, they were they be, they be you are doing yeah. the tests you are doing the physical you're doing this and they have been compiling later on you hear about my also achievement in, in sanis yeah. so they came up with a selection of four people the best of the lot mm. in ghana here to go to britain and meet the best of the lot across the commonwealth wow everybody chose the best Tanzania, kenya nigeria the best for to go to science so this is the anonymous son of a fisherman yes from simpa yes simpa but it was beautiful, and this way. I, I don't worry. I want to. I want to experience. The There's so much to say. I don't want to. The joy. The joy. <laughs> you know. So how did you relate? How did you communicate that to your parents, Paco? My parents, you know, I, I, I just told my my father. Mm -hmm. Letter. You no, know, I go to Winneban. Winneban, yes. Those days, about one hour, you are in Winneban. I mean, it didn't take a long time. Oh, okay. So you're allowed to go home? Oh, no, no. I mean... When you're in the academy? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You can, you can travel. I mean, weekend, you are exiled, you can go. Okay. You are not in prison. I mean, you can be allowed to go. So I, I told him I was going away to Britain. It was elated. And, uh, you know, September 14th, we left. I went to Sandhurst. I went to Camberley. Not Camberley, Canterbury. Canterbury. Canterbury Cathedral. Kent. Thomas Abeke, the Archbishop, was assassinated by Henry II. Uh, I mean, I, my history, I still remember, I don't know what's inside my brain, but I remember history in, in, in secondary school. Yeah. When Henry II, Thomas Abeke, was Archbishop, mm -hmm. who condemned him, mm -hmm. so they were sent to go to the, uh, the, the, the Canterbury Cathedral and murder this Archbishop. Mm -hmm. Anyway, from there, two weeks later, we went, I, we went with army cadets. Army, four of us, myself, Mifetu, I could see and Feli. And Feli, Roger Feli. Roger Feli. Mm. Then there were Navy ones. Uh, um, Amedumi. Amedumi. Yeah, Roy. Uh, uh, Joy Amedumi. Joy Amedumi. Yeah. Then there was uh, Chileme. Chileme, yeah. Chileme. That's and there were, there were two others. Chileme, who later on was connected to some Coco or something? He, 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 he went to Brownhafu as, uh, yeah. as uh, something. Commissioner. He, he, they, were, they were all there. I'm suddenly in all there. Anyway, so he went to San Jose and it was an experience. But you had read about Sandhurst before. No, I didn't know anything about Britain. I learned a bit of geography about everything <laughs> being cold and winter and so on. But I never experienced snow or yeah. sleet or whatever. I mean, I never. So when you actually physically meet it, it was an ordeal and experience worth savoring. I mean, worth, you know, like you lie on the snow and train and shoot. Really? Lie on the snow and, and train. You don't even feel the, 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 the cold. I mean, you are conditioned. See, the brain is very powerful because you can do anything. So your first day, you you were moved from. Did you go by aircraft? No, no, we, we move. Uh, then 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 you have the Britannia aircraft, propeller pr 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 propeller aircraft. You went to Rome, Fumicino Air Airport in Rome. The plane developed engine problems, so we had to delay there and uh, and uh, had uh, had breakfast. The, the 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 air came without like what like, you know as if it wasn't cooked at all. It was just raw egg on, <laughs> in the plate. You had to go through all this. Then we flew to Britain and landed at the airport. And then you went to Canterbury to spend about two weeks there to acclimatize before Sandhurst opened. But Sandhurst was a place. Mm. I've been going there regularly. I've got some friends here. I mean, you have been, you know, I have a picture which are that's yeah. that's Remington Academy. That's Sandhurst. Yeah. That's a picture there. All these are Sandhurst. Okay. Yeah. It this was is back in the day, right? No, this one. Listen, I, I go there almost every every few days. I was here last last year. My wow. group, we have been meeting regularly. Wow. Regularly. Wow. So this meeting took last year, the last mm. one, the last year, we had a meeting and, there. And these people you have here were all were well, my classmates, with you. my 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 classmates. They were British. They all retired now. And many of them are, are no more. But we keep the few that are alive. We keep meeting each other. We keep you know a minute a minute our past you and know, they're we, all uh, british people they are british mm. they are british mm. unfortunately there were some nigerians there but they were killed during the civil war oh. and we have lost quite a, quite a lot of them too uh, some of them are still they are not living many of them are not living mm. but your life is just something which is which is you look back and say what's all this life it's full of care we have no time to stand and stay no mm. time to stand beneath the bow and stay as go to a ship this i'm again it's amazing that i can remember these I poems remember the poems it's yeah. amazing anyway so life in the army where two years passed very quickly, you know, and in the last uh, examination results, I was adjured to be the best 
of the lot from the Commonwealth in that group. Wow. About 250 students were in the class. Then the, the, the foreign ones from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Gambia, Kenya, 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 Sierra Leone, from India, from Pakistan. You are yet to be the best. That might be an achievement worth of course. Your mentioning. Of course. You know, and a letter came from the, my commanding officer to my father. I saw it when I came back from Britain. He wrote to tell, tell him, your son had done so well, having judged, I judged the best. And this was fantastic, you know. So it was like two years of, 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 of wonderful experience. Mm, in Sandhurst. In Sandhurst. We traveled to Germany, trained in Germany. I mean, it gives you an experience you cannot buy anywhere, mm. physical, to toughen your brain, toughen your body. This is where, Ghana, we need people who are tough. Not only going to read law and talk a lot of law. No, the toughness to get things done. Get things done. You know, you have, you have to be strong, physically mm. strong in the mind. Strong. Ah, wow. Young people coming must be strong. Ghana, mm. Ghana is a beautiful country. To tell me yeah. you can't find a job, you can't grow food, you can't do this for Christ's sake. You can I do know, everything. I know, I know. You know, and I get upset. But when I get up, I said to my wife yesterday, I said, look, if I die, Ghana has killed me. I'm, I'm, I'm so sad about Ghana. I'm so worried about Ghana. That if I could go to Sanhes from Fisherman son, and top my class, mm. then there's nothing we cannot do. You're right. You're right. You know, we have, we have so when did, you, when did you, so after Sanhes, you came back to Ghana? Came back in 1963, mm -hmm. August 8th. Good. I spent two days, two days I came back to Ghana. Right. I had money in the bank. That's what the money took. Barclays Bank, uh, Takradi, where I was supposed to. Today, people see money. I, to, I bought this, the, the pound to, to, to see this. I took the money from the bank and bought it to, 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 to Ghana. And I've been with Bakken Bank for the past 60 years since I joined the Army. Mm. You know, so the life has been, it, it's, been, it's, been ex, it's been challenging. Yeah. There have been, they've been routine challenges. But mm -hmm. you must be tough enough to, to ride these challenges. True. true. So you came as a, as a young military officer. Young military officer. Uh, but at this time, your mates, your original mates in Ghana had passed out already. Passed out. In fact, when I left in 61, somehow, the Nkuma had some problem with the British officers. So he, who, who, who he sacked them. He sacked yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And quickly, they had to commission our, our my colleagues mm -hmm. a year less than they would have spent in the academy. Mm -hmm. so they had one year training. Okay. But I had two more training, two more years. So yeah. I had three years training. So I was actually overtrained. <laughs> so when I came back, I came to join. I mean, our ranks were, were completely were, 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 you know, reconciled. And I, yeah. you know, but my army number is much higher, even though my mates were, you know, we all commissioned together. Mm -hmm. But they were commissioned earlier. But that didn't bother me. The ranking, so they, those things didn't bother me. You see, you, you don't care. I would have some funny cars. Those cars don't, 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 I don't mind, mind them. It's what you are. It's not the car you drive which makes you who you are. That's what you should know I'm in Ghana. You. That, I'm with you. You know, this country had good people. Yeah. Good people, many good people, but they are getting finished. Those in their 90s, where people like Professor I'm from, uh, um, Mr. F.A. Jantua, what the minister in Chroma, minister in the gym, uh, the gym. Yeah. Mino, it's about 98 or thereabout. Mm. There are a few of them. Yeah. But we don't make use of their experience and their brains. Expertise, yeah. When they, I was in Sanhef, today they also have a problem with the Boris Johnson what, and all the rest. And you were marched to the House of Commons the following week, we the foreign students, to go and observe Parliament at work, House of Laws, House of Commons. We dine with the, uh, with, the, with the parliamentarians on the banks of River Thames, you know, went to House of Laws, saw these old people hardly able to breathe mm -hmm. but they were using all their experience their knowledge to before impact society yes. but here we don't we have problems there are they many good people there. Mm -hmm. there are many people that can contribute but Ghana is oh, a politician or in this you know, MPP. so what he's a Ghanaian so use him you know that's the bane of our problem in Ghana today mm -hmm. uh, we had got politics gone too far too far that you have somebody who can so, look, we are going around looking for people to come and grow rice. Grow rice? I jumped on 47 years ago, 72. That was everywhere. I was, if you came to my house, food everywhere. 
You are going to ask the Koreans and the Chinese what not to tell how to grow rice? Come on. We should have faith in ourselves. Mm. We should believe in ourselves. My biggest asset that I have so much confidence in myself that I say, I say to myself, whatever any 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 uh, body has done, I do I can do if I apply myself properly. I have a son who went to school at Bama Camp here. Went to Aquinas. He's a top surgeon in London University Hospital. He's here. Mm. And my grandson and granddaughter will come. They are very white. But when tomorrow when they walk, they say no no man, sir. But you are not getting it. I'm of course yeah, no, no man, sir, was my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So they will be living on my past deeds. Yeah. And reputation. And reputation. Thank you very much, General Nunu Mensa. I am grateful. We have learned so much in this um, short hour that we have spent with you. Um, it looks like we still have a lot to talk about. So we will visit you again and then we can get into now post um, military academy and starting the military life in Takrade and beyond to this day. But for now, this is where we draw the curtains. So you've been watching Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll be with you another time. Bye.